new year welcome you guys we made it to 2024 let's go maybe i'm nervous <laughs> so it's the start of the year so i thought that i would share with you guys my uh reading goals for the year and also my yearly tbr i tried to make my yearly tbr fit with some of the goals on my list that way i was kind of like built in low-key already working on my goals for the year if that makes sense so i'm going to go through my goals first and then i'm going to talk about my tbr that way you guys can see kind of how they relate to each other how's that sound good sound good yay i am tired <laughs> Okay, so let's start with the goals. Um, they are written in my journal, so I'm going to read from my journal today. How fun, special guest. <laughs> okay, so the first goal of the year is that I want to read more books that I already own. Um, I don't necessarily consider myself like a person who has like a book buying problem. I actually use my library uh, pretty consistently. On the receipt, they tell you how much money you save um, throughout the year by like renting books from the library versus buying them in real life and i think this year i had like saved over six thousand dollars um, <laughs> because i use my library like a lot i check out books pretty much constantly um and so i end up like having the same problem that i would have if i was buying books constantly i just don't read the books that i already have because they just like sit on the shelf and then like a hold comes in and i'm like well i only have 21 days to read it so then i like focus on my holds and stuff so i just want to focus more on the stuff that i already have here at the house i also would like to read more nonfiction this year i find myself like feeling like nonfiction is specifically for like academic or for school purposes um instead of just allowing myself to enjoy Nonfiction topics and nonfiction books, things that I find really interesting. I have a lot of nonfiction books for, and I never read because I feel like without a classroom and school and classmates and professors to discuss the novel with, that I'm like not getting enough out of it. When in reality, like even reading it by myself, getting what little I do out of it then is more than not reading it at all. So my excuse doesn't make sense, therefore it's not valid. <laughs> I also would like to read more short books. I have this weird thing about books where if it's short, for some reason, I feel like it's not gonna be like meaningful enough or it's not gonna leave like an impression on me or anything like that. When in reality, short books are a lot harder to write than longer books. Um, oftentimes the themes are more distilled because everything is so edited down that you really only have like the meat of what's left in a short book. Rather, I think with a longer book, there is more of an opportunity to get lost in all of that extra stuff. Uh, and so I, I don't know why I think that about short books. I don't know why, what vendetta I have against them. I'm not really sure what that's about. Uh, so I would like to fix that this year. I don't wanna do that anymore. I think it's stupid. I don't wanna do it. <laughs> the third goal this year, is this the third? The next goal. <laughs> Is that I would like to be more conscientious about the authors that I read. I think that I read a pretty wide array of like perspectives. I try to make sure that the main character has something that's either completely different from me or is almost identical to me <laughs> so that I can get like validity in my own perspective but also I might, not might, I definitely will, experience and learn other things from other perspectives but i'm not very conscientious about the authors that i'm looking at typically it's just the characters and i think if i was more conscientious about that then i would end up reading even more like different perspectives and people who have different lifestyles and like things like that something i'm just keeping an eye on not too worried about it just keeping an eye on it okay two more so I have finally gotten a book of the month subscription. I have wanted it forever. I feel like it's just, I don't know if it was social media pressure or if it's just the fact that they really do pick really great books, but I've always wanted one, but I'm too nervous that I'm not actually gonna use it. This year, I'm going to, in the same month that I get the book, I have to read it. If I miss a month, I have to cancel my subscription. Unless I skip a month, because if I skip a month, then it doesn't matter. But 
if I get a book and I don't read it in that month, then the next month I am not allowed to get another one. I have to cancel my subscription. It's a one and done type of deal. I'm not wasting money this year. I will not be doing that. I signed up literally yesterday. I've already picked my January book. I'll put it on the screen. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> and so this book will definitely be read in January because otherwise I have to cancel my subscription and I failed the first month in and that's sad. The last one, the big one, the number, I am hoping to read 60 books this year. I didn't keep track of how many books I read last year. I didn't really keep track of reading stats until about halfway through the year, so I don't really know what happened, but I have a feeling I read somewhere around 60 to 70 books. That just felt kind of like the right number, um, and so I made my reading goal 60 books this year because I think that's about how many I'm reading already. This is the first year I'm gonna be like tracking everything, and so, Felt like a safe option, felt like a good way to go, so I just did it. It was really more of a gut feeling than anything else. Okay, so there are the books for the year. It is time to move on to my January TBR. They are all right here. So, if you notice, the first goal that I talked about was reading more books that I already own. So this year, I decided to pick my yearly TBR based solely on books that I already had at the house. I tried to pick books that at one point I really, really, really wanted to read, and then I just missed out on for whatever reason, or I forgot about it, or God only knows what, but I tried to pick those books that I really, really, really wanted to read at one point that I already had at my house, and I picked 12 so that I could have one for every month of the year to kind of like keep myself accountable at a more even pace. It'll help me finish the TBR, it'll help me actually meet this goal that I want to meet. I just thought it was a nice way to keep everything moving, you know? Nice, well-oiled machine type stuff happening over here. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the first one. That would be Yellow Face by R.F. Kwan. This was one of my uh, most anticipated releases of last year, and it just never happened. I don't know what happened. I don't know why, um, but it just never happened. I just never got to it. If you don't know, this is the story of a woman who steals a fellow writer's manuscript. It was a woman who she graduated college with, I believe. She did her MFA with her, and they were both supposed to get super famous. They were both supposed to be these like literary giants um, coming out of their year, and she did not. Our main character did not, but our this other lady did. Um, so our main character decides to steal her manuscript after a freak accident, and publish it as her own. But the issue is that uh, the main character is white and the woman she stole from is Asian and she wrote a story about Chinese laborers in World War I. Something that our main character has no understanding of, no cultural connection to, nothing like that. And so it follows how the publishing industry has to kind of like twist this story a bit so that it's kind of socially acceptable for our main character to the one who publishes this book. People say that this book, despite being amazing, is R.F. Kwong's weakest novel so far. I actually have not read a single thing by her, which is why this was on my anticipated releases, because this seems like the thing that she's written that I would connect with the most. It has social commentary, com commentary on race, but from an Asian perspective, and it has um, commentary about how the publishing industry, which is seen kind of as this like wholesome, cute uh, industry, can actually be just as biased and as kind of like grimy, I guess, and fucked as all of the other industries because we live in a capitalist society. Um, so all of that is stuff that I would absolutely eat up, stuff that I would love, and I just need to like bite the bullet and read this book. Next is one that I did not know I like had in me. It's The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Yeah, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I, I'm, I was going through my shelves and I was like, oh yeah, this sounds like a good one. I didn't know that I wanted to read it, didn't know that I was curious, didn't know that I felt like I was missing out on something. I don't know, I just saw it and I was like, this is something that could be good. <laughs> I'm sure you know by now, but this book is a young adult is it young at all or is it just coming of age? It's a story about a young girl um, that is narrated by death itself. And this girl, she lives in a really poor, really rural town during the Nazi occupation. And she has this really uh, kind of sneaky habit of when she finds a book, she has to steal it. And she shares these books with all the people around her. And it is just a story about death following this girl. 
and it sounds really amazing um people talk about it as like one of the best books they've ever read it's heralded as heralded as a classic it's like supposed to be this amazing fantastic wonderful book i've had this book for like 10 years and i just i saw it and i felt like it called to me so maybe this year is the year the next one is cultish by amanda montel so i put this on here to kind of help kickstart my like needing to read more nonfiction. Um, this is a book all about the language of cults and kind of what they do and say uh, to make you want to join the cult, but then also to keep you there. And if you've ever felt like something feels kind of culty, it's probably because they're using language like this. And I just think this is going to make me smarter <laughs> and like more aware of my surroundings in a very specific sort of way. Uh, also, I watched a documentary on cults and Amanda Montel was one of the people who was speaking and talking and educating us about cults and she's amazing and I fell immediately in love with her and so now I need to read this book. <laughs> Next up, we have Cast by Isabella Wilkerson. Or is it just Isabel? Oops, sorry. Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. Um, this is a book about the American culture <laughs> and American society and how it is really built more like a caste system than anything else. Isabel Wilkerson really breaks down the caste system into I think eight different pillars and uses stories about us but also about other cultures and other places and I believe even Nazi Germany um, to show how American culture really is just a caste system. And then I've heard that the latter half of it is more like a hopeful exploration of what we can do in the future to fix this and to make this better um, and to kind of really make our way towards equity and equality and all of that stuff. Uh, I actually have two versions of this book. I have the original version that was published. Oops. Sorry. I also have the version that was adapted for young adults. Um, I don't know how I ended up with both. I probably picked this up because I'm terrified that this one, the original one, is going to be a little too hard, to be honest. I mean, this is literally what my undergrad degree is in. I, I studied ethnic studies and cultural studies. I, this is, this is like me. I am literally trained and academically, uh, allowed, I don't know, to read and understand this type of work. And I feel like because I don't have a classroom and I don't have classmates and I don't have people to like, I don't know, discuss with? I'm not sure. I just am worried that there's going to be things in here that I miss and then I'm not going to know. Just like I said, this is exactly the reason why I want to read more nonfiction this year. It is the exact same reason. I'm just nervous that I'm not getting enough and so then I push it off and then I end up not getting anything at all and that makes no sense and I will not stand for it. I'm done with my own bullshit. I guess I should mention this. I don't know which copy of these I will read. I will most likely probably start with the adapted for young adults and then if I feel really comfortable I'll jump into the like original one or maybe I'll read this one first and then the original one or the other way around. I'm not really sure. If either of these books gets read or if half of both of them gets read, I'm counting this as a win. This concept and ideas and words in any fashion if they're consumed it counts. <laughs> Okay, so the next one is kind of working towards a goal that I really didn't like mention here because it's not a reading goal, it's more like a personal goal of mine. Um, I would like to read more poetry this year. I was a poet at one point in my life. I, um, my minor in college is in poetry. I have, you know, gotten stuff published before, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I, it, it was a life passion of mine for a long time, That I, something that I thought I would do forever. Uh, and I have fallen off of it. I'm not really sure why. And I feel like a part of me is missing. And so a personal goal of mine is to read more poetry this year because the best way to inspire yourself to write poetry is to read really great poetry. These three books are here to help me with that. The first one is Matt Mitchell's Neon Hollywood Cowboy. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this book mainly because I don't need to say a lot about this book. All you need to do is look up the word, the poem Lizard Brain by Matt Mitchell and tell me that you wouldn't want to read this book. I don't have to say anything because Matt said it all themselves, you know? 
But if you are curious, this is a collection of poems uh, surrounding Matt's like experiences in life being a intersex person in a society that is obsessed with gender. It sounds great. It sounds like a perspective I've never heard before. And Lizard Brain is my favorite poem, I think maybe of all time. And so I don't know why I haven't read more by Matt. Just doesn't make sense. Next one, Crush by Richard Sykin. This was given to me as a graduation present from one of my favorite professors of all time. Because of that, I don't know if it put extra pressure on this novel or if it's because every time I pick this up, I start to cry a little because I miss him so much. <laughs> Richard Sykin, I have read some of his like individual poems and other anthologies and stuff and he has such a way with language and such a way with like absurdism basically he just writes these like most strange and peculiar poems in a way that makes you feel seen and feel heard even though you don't always know what's going on in the poem and i think that's a talent that is sick as hell and i'm jealous and also i want to know more of maybe i might be able to emulate i'm not sure but in the desire to read more poetry that's going to make me want to write poetry i also want to read poetry that's going to expand what i think of poetry as and how i approach writing a poem and i think this is the kind of novel that will do that for me this isn't a novel the kind of collections of work that will do that for me. The last one is Devotions by Mary Oliver. This is a collection of a lot of Mary Oliver's work over the year. It's not all of it, but it is a lot of it. Um, and it is basically this just like soft and gentle exploration of life in connection to nature um, and how it really is all just one and the same. <laughs> it's like the way that I'm going to describe it. She is brilliant. I've read several of her individual poems and I love her and she writes poems that feel like a hug and it's very accessible, very easy. And I think this is a good place to kind of jump back into poetry with um, to prepare me for some more abstract stuff that's in these two, you know? This is the next one. It's The Five Wounds. Um, you're looking at it. You see it. This is a big boy. <laughs> but regardless, this uh, everyone who talks about this book who has read it in my own personal life has said that it is one of the best books they have ever read in their life, hands down. And there's something sort of beautiful about somebody coming to you and saying, hey, do you see this book? This book is the love of my life and you're like whoa okay <laughs> you know there's just something about that that feels kind of like an invitation into somebody's like psyche and heart and soul that um can be intimidating but also feels like sort of special in a way and a lot of people that i really care about said that about this book and i would like to read it just to honor that this book intimidates the crap out of me and uh, if you don't know, it's about a family, uh, five generations of a family, I believe in one house. All of it is sort of kicked off by this 15 year old girl named Angel. She shows up on her estranged father's doorstep, pregnant and telling him that she's just ran away from home, which is her mother, uh, and she needs a place to stay. And the dad himself is like a bit of a like a deadbeat in a way he kind of has an alcohol problem and he's just like not happy with the course of his own life um and so he's not sure that he's gonna be able to help her and that sort of kickstarts this whole family kind of getting back together all in this one house i believe and it follows the book takes place in the first year of angel's son's life i've heard it's just really heartwarming and it's really touching uh and that it touches on a lot of really human experiences but in a way that doesn't forget that individual cultures and traditions exist as well and i just think that's a really fine line to walk and i'm very curious about it and i want i want to know more i'm terrified but i want to know more <laughs> transcendent kingdom by yag yazi first i have never seen this cover before has anybody else seen this cover before I just feel like I have a rare copy. I could be completely wrong, but... This isn't rare, I got it at Target. 
never mind ignore that i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> anyway this is an incredibly popular book i'm actually going to talk about this one and the next one at the same time so transcendent kingdom and seven J days in june feel very similar to me in my head in the reason of why i have been avoiding them when a book gets so much hype I get nervous that the hype is going to warp the way that I see the novel, either in a positive way or in a negative way, it just depends, but I get nervous that I won't enjoy a book that I otherwise might have because of all of the hype around it. So then I'm like, well, I'll just wait until the hype dies down and I'll read it then and it's no big deal. But what happens is I end up kind of forgetting about them and other stuff like makes its way onto my tbr and in my radar and i focus on those instead of the stuff that i said i was gonna read and that's exactly what happened with both of these two books i just got distracted by other stuff even though i really do feel like these are books that i will love and that will make me cry and that'll make me sob all right transcendent kingdom so this is i believe kind of like a second coming of age sort of novel or like a exploration of growth in this woman's late 20s, early 30s, I believe. Uh, she is a scientist who studies rats, uh, particularly addiction behavior in rats, and her brother is also an addict himself, uh, and her mother is like deeply religious, and so she is sort of navigating the her own understandings of life through a scientific lens, but also through a religious background and upbringing, um, and also as somebody who is currently being affected by the choices of other people, um, sort of devastatingly affected by them. Seven Days in June. This is a second chance romance um, about a couple who spent a week together as like young writers. That was this like passionate, amazing, fantastic kind of once in a lifetime week uh, that ends pretty badly. And then years later, they are both successful writers they run into each other once again and you slowly start to understand that they have been writing kind of these love letters to each other through their works over the years the last one nope <laughs> the next one is where the crawdads sing by delia owens everybody knows this book everybody knows this book this book was huge in 2018 2019 and then the movie came out 2022 i believe um, this is a coming of age mystery surrounding a girl who was abandoned when she was six um, and she kind of had to find her own way and she ended up growing up in the swamps of North Carolina. Yeah, of a small town in North Carolina. Um, so when somebody in the town like ends up dead, they immediately assume it is her because she's kind of like shrouded in mystery and she's kind of like regarded as this like weird girl who lives all by herself and in reality that's not the case she's actually very sensitive and very intelligent um i lent this book to my best friend on vacation a couple of years ago and i watched her sob her way through this and i just was immediately terrified and i never got over that fear but this book really truly i've heard amazing things about and so i'm very excited to uh get into it and to see what it's all about even though I know I'm gonna cry, uh, but my best friend has been hounding me about it, so I've gotta read it eventually, right? Okay, we're here, we made it. This is the last book of the TBR, and you may have noticed that this has a highlighter in it because I've already started this book twice and I cannot get my way through it. Uh, this book is here on this list because I know for a fact that I can be a science fiction girly. I know it's in me, I can feel it, sitting there sort of dormant waiting for me to buck up and be ready to handle it and this book is going to help me do that <laughs> this is project hail mary by andy weir this is the story of a man who wakes up in a spaceship all alone he doesn't know why he's there he doesn't know why he's alone he doesn't even know who he is and he has to figure all of that out and eventually he realizes he has to figure out how to save the entire planet which is just a wild premise and i've also started this twice um this is how far I got into it the second time and I tried to pick it up again the other day and I've forgotten pretty much all of the science behind how we got here and so it doesn't make a ton of sense anymore so I need to start over again <laughs> but I'm doing it this year I am tackling this it will be read it will be it's got to be okay 
How was that? Did you guys like it? That was a really hard one to film. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was just having a really hard time talking today. I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, so I hope that all made sense. I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I hope that maybe you got a book rec. I don't know. These are all really old, and for the most part, I mean, they've all been recommended a thousand times. Like, this is not a new concept. <laughs> None of these are groundbreaking new recommendations coming from this side of the, the internet, but maybe you also missed one of these, and you were re-reminded how much you wanted to read it at one point in your life. Uh, if that's the case, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know which one you think I should read first uh, as well, because I don't know where to start. I hope you're having a wonderful 2024 so far, uh, and I hope that this year is good to you. Okay, wishing you all the love, the light, and the happiness in the world, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.